There are four main types of batteries that we can buy for our boats. Gel, AGM, traction and leisure. But how do we know which is the right one for our boat? Time to head over to Charles Sterling to find out. So what is the best battery for your domestic or leisure battery bank on your narrowboat? Well, first of all, let's understand the fundamentals. A battery is basically a bucket of energy, and all these batteries are simply buckets of energy. In the real world, there are only two real requirements for batteries. One is to start your car, and the other is to run a forklift truck. The marine market is so small, there is nothing built specifically for the marine market. So any batteries that you are presented with will be moved from some other market. If you want to start a car, you have a starter motor which pulls a lot of current very quickly. And the only way to do that is to have a large surface area of plates and the plates are very thin. Now every time you charge and discharge a battery, bits fall off the plates. The thinner the plates, the larger the surface area, the more bits fall off. So from the point of view of cold cranking, those batteries are great. From the point of view of deep cycling, they're really bad. On the other hand, you have a forklift truck. It's just interested in delivering power at a steady level, so it's not interested in cold cranking. So the two batteries have exactly the same power. One can be pulled out quickly, the other is pulled out slower. The slower one has thicker plates, it will last longer for deep cycling. And that's why you have traction batteries and starter batteries. And the two cannot be mixed. You cannot have cold cranking and deep cycling. People always say, this is my opinion. Um, it's not my opinion. We're an engineering company. We do the tests here regularly. We destroy batteries on a regular basis. Plus, the proof is on the battery. If you look at your battery and you see CC or cold cranking, it's a starter battery. Now, that doesn't make it a bad thing. You just need to understand where you would use that battery and what to expect from that battery. So first of all, let's explore gel batteries. The German authorities wanted a battery that could turn upside down in a car accident, and if the battery was split, no liquid would escape from the battery. Now, this was a safety criteria. It wasn't performance, in which case these are a complete non-starter. Next, we come to AGM. AGM are basically the latest derivative from gel. An AGM is fundamentally a lead acid battery with no surplus water. It's great from the point of view of it's got fantastic cold cranking abilities, but you can't charge them quickly because like all batteries, if you charge in excess of 10% of their amp hour capacity, they will gas. There's no surplus water in this battery to be able to deal with the gassing. This is the standard sealed lead acid battery that most of us refer to as leisure batteries. It's simply a car or lorry starter battery with a sticky label on the front, but it does what it says it does on the box. These are fine for leisure applications due to their cost. They are very low cost and they should not be disregarded. And finally, we have my favorite battery for many reasons, deep cycle battery. These can be topped up, they can be abused, they can be cycled deeply, they can be charged quickly, and it's the closest thing you can get at a reasonable cost before you have to go to a forklift truck battery. Okay, so we're down to two batteries now. So the question is, which is the best battery? Well, the reality is this battery is 84 pounds, and this battery is 129 pounds. If you are a leisure boat user, which is two weekends per month, plus maybe three to four weeks holiday in the summer, then you will easily get five to six years use out of this battery. However, if you're going to live on board and use your batteries every day, or if you're going on long-term cruising, I would suspect that battery would last you in the region of six months. So for hard use, you've got to use six volt traction batteries 
join two 6 volts together to give you 12 volt and simply build your battery bank up to whatever size you require. You will be looking at these batteries, assuming you charge them correctly, in 10 years' time. A lot of these exotic batteries are sold on the premise that they are maintenance-free. Maintenance-free derives from approximately 20 to 25 years ago when you had to top up your battery in your car. But of course, some of us didn't. So the battery companies realized, let's put an inch of water extra in the battery and put a lid over the top and call them maintenance-free. And in that market, they are maintenance-free. But when you go on to the domestic battery system on a narrow boat, you do a lot of deep cycling and fast charging. The term maintenance-free no longer applies. I like to use the term unable to maintain instead of the term maintenance-free because these batteries will require maintenance and you cannot give it to them. One final thing to remember is the term guarantee. There are some ludicrous guarantees on these batteries. Well, this is what I call a statistics guarantee. In other words, 90% of the people that buy these batteries don't give them a hard time. 10% give them a hard time. So it's a simple case of increasing the price of a mediocre product in order to accommodate the fact that 90% of the people will not use the batteries hard. 10% will. Therefore, just simply give the 10% a replacement battery, if you're lucky. So be careful of unrealistic guarantees with batteries because they are exactly that, unrealistic. Mm -hmm.